What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Be the Maze. It's Ian B. It's your go, Jasha. And we have a special guest for y'all today. This is going to be a gem packed episode. Make sure you get your notes out because we have the one and only Miss Gia Tajay. Gia, how are you doing this morning? Hey, guys. I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. So we like to open our show with a, a segment of how's your week going? So Jay, how, how's your week going so far? Um, my week flew by in the, like a flick of an eye. I did not, ooh, alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> I did not um, expect it to go by so fast. Um, I expect this week to go by fast too. So mm. I like try to get my groundings. I wanted to, but we'll slow down a little bit. Enjoy the, enjoy the roses for a little bit. For sure. How about you? Week has been very good. It also went by extremely fast. I looked up and it was Thursday and I was like, what the hell? So making sure I was able to slow down a little bit this weekend, got some stuff done that I wanted to do. And, um, you know, now it's just getting prepared for a new week. Gia, how are you? How's your week been? My week has been really great. Um, I started my last first day of senior year. So I was a bit like, oh my gosh, this is really happening um so it was honestly just um like a praise god kind of week because it's been a long time coming so i'm just really happy to be here <laughs> and grateful to be here so show, yes, yes, show. yes congratulations congratulations and for the audience she's graduating from the number one hbcu just like just so y'all know for 15 years and debt free. Period. <laughs> now that's a flex, debt free. That, that's just that's, that's flex. a flex. <laughs> now, before we get started, we just want to remind y'all: please like, subscribe to this podcast. We can't do this without y'all. We do what we do because of y'all. Make sure that you're liking, subscribing, leaving reviews, and interacting with us on social media. So we're going to jump right into it. Gia, you talked about your last first day of college congratulations and that is also mm -hmm. the core foundation of all you do so can you just tell us a little bit more about who you are and how yes you are? of course so yes thanks guys first for having me I'm I'm honored to be here and really grateful to have the opportunity to share my story so I look forward to this episode um but my business all things college so when I was a when I was a freshman in high school I was like just super eager to go to college, learn about college, understand what was college, what was the admissions process, how do I get scholarships, and so it was myself and a bunch of my peers. Most of them were upperclassmen, so I was the freshman, the little girl <laughs> in there trying to figure out how can we all go to school, and so we started off in Panera Bread. It was about five of us, then it was like seven of us, and before I knew it, it was 13, 20, 22, 30. And I had to start renting out libraries, like our local libraries to oh, wow. host people. And so with these sessions, I would find local tutors in the community to come and teach us in the areas that we were lacking. So most of the time it was math. Mm -hmm. um, I would find people who had already been through the college admissions process to explain it to us and understand like, how can they help us or how can they guide us? So it was a lot of like my teachers from middle school and high school who was able to come and support us in that way. And then um, fortunately at the time um, we were in the library, but then it got to a point where I was like, okay, we're making a lot of noise. Let's go, let's move over to my mom's office. So that's really kind of how everything started. And then when I was a junior in high school, I created this all things college dream board, which that's what it's called now. But at the time it was just a, like, it was a board that literally helped me understand how to go about um, like visualizing my goals for college. And uh -huh. so on the board, it had all the schools, the locations, the tuition costs, the ACT scores required, the ACT, the ACT, ACT, SAT, GPA, all of that. And so basically it was just a, um, a visual reminder for me to like stay committed and understand what I need to do to reach those goals. And so right. when I created that as a junior, um, I posted it on my social media and then different teachers from Georgia within Cobb County, Fulton County, like was like, oh my gosh, can you come teach my kids what you're doing? And so from that moment, that's kind of like how everything took its course and how I moved into the the teaching space of it and the um, guidance and coaching aspect of it. So essentially now all things college just became a business not too long ago. 
and All Things College advocates for quality education by informing both the parent and the student on the importance of college readiness, standardized test prep, and scholarships. So essentially, I help students, mainly students within the minority community, so Black and Latina students, Latina and Latino, because we don't discriminate, <laughs> um, how to get ready for college and understand how to go debt-free. Wow. I wish I would have had access to that. I felt like wow. when I came to college or I was preparing for college, all I knew was like, you had to get a recommendation. You had to test well. And I was like, had that thick old mm -hmm. SAT, ACT book trying to get through it. I think that is so beneficial to like, especially when you're doing it with your peers. So it's like, you're, you guys are doing it together and you have yes. that support yes. system too. 100%. I have a very strong memory of every week. My mom would be like, apply for scholarships. And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah I I was when we were looking into all things college like just the things that you're doing is amazing and I really do appreciate the fact that not only are you helping students but you're also helping parents understand how to support their child through um, college readiness I think that's an important factor that a lot of people miss out on we focus on the kid the kid the kid but like the kid is going to go as far sometimes as the parent pushes them. So I think yes. that is amazing. Thank you. Absolutely. So what I what is one of the biggest things that you've learned since starting All Things College and now making it like a full business? That's a great question. <clears throat> and something that I've learned since starting All Things College. Um. I always knew that it was bigger than me, like that this would impact more people than just myself or just my family. I just didn't understand the capacity in which or like the course, like how quickly the course would go. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes I, I would try to help as many people as I can, but then overwhelm myself because it's literally just me right now. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm trying to figure out, okay, virtual assistants, how can I get into some programs that will give me some grants so I can hire some people. But essentially the biggest thing that I've learned is that because it is bigger than me, the, the requirement or the pressure is going to be greater. So I have to understand how can I like rise up to the level and meet this expectation because this is my purpose. Like I'm grateful to be in the position to walk in my purpose to understand how what I can offer and how my testimony can be a learning lesson for somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. So what was that process like? Um, started taking us back to the very beginning of mm -hmm. gathering your friends and having these people all believe in you. And I know you had to, both of your parents are entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. I have an entrepreneur mother. You can't just come with no like simple idea. You gotta really <laughs> pitch it and like really be committed to it. What was that like? All right. That's another great question. So All Things College is my second business. My very first business was Pretty Hair Posse. So Pretty Hair Posse um, essentially encouraged young Black women and well, really all women, but everybody who I've been helping is either Black or Hispanic because I'm Black and Hispanic. So all, Pretty Hair Posse encouraged women to embrace your natural hair. So I had been, at the time I was about 14, 15 and I was struggling to grow my hair mm -hmm. and it like really altered my self-esteem or like I, I wasn't as confident. And so I wanted to understand how to like overcome that. And so I started taking this, this supplement and I took it for about a year before I knew it worked. I was like, mom, we got to make sure it worked because I can't be telling people buy this stuff and it don't work. So we signed up and we became, um, we became like our own business but by selling the products. And so the mission of Pretty Hair Posse was to encourage young women to embrace natural hair and beauty. But the mission behind it was teaching young girls how to create their own business so that way they can they can afford to go to college. So that way when it's time for them to go to school, there's no reason why you can't. You already know how to start a business. You already know how to generate mm. money for your own, like for yourself. So even if your parents can afford it, that, that shouldn't be a reason why you can't go or why you can't essentially move forward and pursue your dreams. So from Pretty Hair Posse, that was kind of how I segued to All Things College. And then I realized that was really what I did naturally. I did it just not even by thinking. I would do it, help parents, students, literally all the time. So I segued to that 
probably it probably took about two years to get to all things college but before it was all things college if that makes sense yeah yeah did they answer your question yes it did and what what has that been like with having such strong role models and seeing both of your parents um your mom being in finance and your father selling luxury cars what is that like in that experience in that because those are not easy fields (laughs) you know it's honestly at first I didn't understand what was going on because my mom she comes from corporate America so she has about 20 years of banking under her belt and she moved to become an entrepreneur um like 2012 2013 and my dad has been an entrepreneur like his whole life he was in the army for a long time then he switched paths so having both of them pursuing like what they love or what they're passionate about has only encouraged me or inspired me to kind of do the same thing essentially and like my other sisters as well we all they're young but they're already like thinking how can I start a business what can I do to (laughs) make some money so ultimately it's just it's been a really a great privilege because I have people supporting me and encouraging me where I know other students or other um other students or other kids daughters and sons may not have that support because everyone doesn't understand what does it mean to pursue your dream to pursue your passion yeah that's so true and it's a blessing to have that support as well yeah. whether it comes in like like family bonds friendships mm-hmm. or just even you know like we've all had the teacher or the the fam- the neighbor who looks out for us like that, yeah. that's a blessing to have that yeah so I'm going to ask, I have a personal question. I have a little sister, she's 14, and I'm trying to get her to go to Spelman, but nonetheless, get her to start preparing for college. Or if you're listening, we being straightforward. (laughs) So what would you suggest, one, the age of starting college prep, and Mm -hmm. then like, two, how to kind of get, you know, a 14-year-old interested in college, because she's just, she just got to high school, and that's all she cares about right now. That's a good question. So my sister is also 14 and then my youngest sister is 11. So I think the sooner you start, the better. Like the sooner you start, you can start earning scholarships as young as second grade. And a lot of people don't know that. But listen, these other communities, they be on it and we are not. So I think the sooner you start, the better, like start tomorrow. And then as far as how to encourage her to consider college, I'm also grateful because as I was going on college tours, my sisters went with us as well. So they've seen schools like Spelman. They've seen the whole AUC. They've seen almost all the West Coast. They've seen Stanford, USC, um, University of San Francisco, UCLA. They saw schools in New York. So honestly, they've been on this journey with me just as much as I've been going through it. <clears throat> so I think now they understand, oh my gosh, my sister's about to graduate from college. And they they know like they're interested in going to college. And I'm also trying to get them to come to Spelman to keep the legacy going yeah. because I'm the first to go. Um, so I think really just telling them about your experience or letting them in and not being like, oh my gosh, I have to go upstairs and do my work, but do it downstairs with them when they're doing their work, you know? So that way it builds kind of camaraderie and they understand what you have going on and why it's important to you. Thank you for that. I'm gonna take note of that for sure. Yes. So I, I want to pivot a little bit, um, because something that you just said it brought a question to mind. You said your sisters were really a part of your college journey, and I know one of your biggest accomplishments in your college journey was accumulating almost uh three fourths of a million dollars, in <laughs> chips, which was like it blew my mind. Um, Mm -hmm. could you just talk a little bit more about that and just like the grit that it took to kind of get from where you started from um not being not being a bad student but not you know being the student that everybody kind of looked towards to having all that scholarship money and scoring so high on your SATs and ACTs yes that's such a great question and this is a this is a story so y'all just stay with me we're here for it so Okay, when I was in middle school, I was the straight A student. I was on the cheer team. Like, I didn't have to worry about anything. I didn't have to really think about homework. It just came naturally. But we moved neighborhoods. So ultimately, I moved schools. 
Mm-hmm. And the school that I was going to, my high school, it was number one, or it still is, it's number one in West Cobb and number three in Cobb County. So it was one of the best public schools in Georgia. And that was such a hard transition because everybody was the creme de la creme. Everybody was top 5%. Like everyone was just so smart. These kids, I was in help for math and these kids were in geometry in freshman year. I'm like, okay, mom, like this is really hard. Like, can I go back (laughs) to where I was? Because it would just be easy. And so I remember my mom saying no, because you're not going to like really understand your academic, not limits, but you're, you're not going to understand how far you can push yourself in your academia if you don't go to the school. Uh And so going to that school, my freshman year, I failed algebra one and I had to go to summer school and I was just so devastated. That was the first F I've ever had in my life. And I was in summer school for two weeks and that was the hardest two weeks of my life. Like I was in school from like eight in the morning to 9 p.m. at night because we had only two weeks to get stuff done to get your passing grade. So I ended up passing summer school, thank God. Oh, I was so tired every day. And I was like, mom, like, why do I have to go through this? And I was like 15 doing this. So fast forward sophomore year, I was able to get a math support class, but then also have the regular geometry class. And so I went from failing the freshman year class to being like the student teacher in geometry class when I was a sophomore. So over that summer, in addition to going to summer school, I've always kept a tutor. Like even now to this point, as a senior in college, I have a tutor. (laughs) So um, I say that to say like, I just, I never wanted to be in that position again. And so I just always made sure I had to put in, I always knew that I had to put in the extra work because stuff does not come easy to me. Like other kids might get it like that, but it takes me a couple of times. So from that, that that kind of transition over to prepping for the ACT and the SAT. And your question was, how did I get the scholarships and the grid? So moving forward, because I failed freshman year, I had about, I didn't have a high GPA. I graduated high school with like a 3-4, but I was applying to college with a 3-2. So when I was approaching my sophomore year, I started testing for the ACT and the SAT. My first score was a 14. That's the lowest you can get. And for context, the highest you can get is a 36. So I started, I like, I was doing practice tests. I had my tutor. So I was like, okay, let's keep going. My junior year, I tested again. And now I was getting more serious because I was about to be a senior. And I tested again and it was a 17. So I was like, okay, something has to give. Like, I'm not going to have a 4.0. But if I want to get into these schools like Stanford, Spelman, whoever, I need to have at least like a 24, 25. So I got my mom got on the phone with this ACT, SAT testing group, and she was telling them what was going on with me as a student. And they were like, oh, she shouldn't look at schools like that. She's never going to get above blank. Like she's y- y'all really should just look at like community college. And I, I heard this conversation. And the, 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 the program was about a thousand dollars and it was the summer before, it was the summer before my senior year. So I had to really like buckle down and figure out what was important to me. Mm -hmm. So I went to the program and at this time I was still in year round tutoring from my own personal tutor to going to tutoring after church on Sundays to having a tutor, like my math teacher tutoring me on Tuesdays and Thursdays and it was program. And so the program was the whole summer. My family was in New Orleans. They was in Florida. I was here in Atlanta studying. I was like, what? Why do I have to keep doing this? Like, (laughs) why do I have to keep putting in so much work and effort? And so it was really a mindset thing. Like, it wasn't even necessarily a, okay, I got to do the work like monotonous, but truly understanding it so I can move forward. But then two, changing my mindset to understand like, what is God trying to teach me in this moment? And so I think going through all of that really built my discipline. And like you said, my grip, because other students would have thrown in the towel and I almost wanted to throw in the towel. Mm-hmm. So it was like, okay, but let's just, let's keep it going. Let's, let's stay focused. And when I was a senior in high school, I retook in between time, I did take practice tests. And so I started seeing like 22s, 23s. Like I was like, okay, we're getting somewhere on the practice test. And I took the test again, like it was August 26th. I will remember this for the rest of my life. 
it was August 26, 2019. And I got, a tw I opened that letter and it said a 29. Everybody was opening their letters. And I was like, I didn't get a notification yet, but I checked it anyways. And I was in my first block. It was audiovisual technology class. And I opened it and it said a 29. And I just started crying and praying. I was like, thank you, Jesus, because I had worked so hard. Yeah. I literally worked so hard. And I called my mom and she thought I was playing, but she was already coming. <laughs> She was already coming to my school to, to talk to my business class um, that next block. So she was on the way to my school anyways. And I was like, no, mom, like, I'm so for real. And I just, I could not stop crying. So I showed her when she got there and we just was crying together and praying together. And so that moment I realized, like, literally, as long as you work hard and keep your faith, you can accomplish freaking whatever. I jumped like 15 points on the ACC. So that was how I was able to position myself for the, at the time I had $700,000 in scholarships. Now I, I stopped keeping count because I've had scholarships in college. Like I've applied for them and gotten them. So at this point it's past a million dollars. And I applied to 18 schools out of the 18, I got into nine out of the nine, I received five full rides and four partial scholarships. So that's how I was able to accumulate those the scholarship money. Oh, wow. And hindsight is 2020 because imagine like imagine if you didn't experience that and then you met the rigor of Spellman and you know that mm -hmm. is the crim of the crim. That's the mm -hmm. crim of the crop right there. And having to persevere even when you don't want to study. Mm -hmm. When I, I was um a health science major, so I was crying in the science center, but like <laughs> you know, you gotta push through. So I definitely, I definitely um emote with you on that. I also struggled mm -hmm. in math. And my first time failing a math class was at Spelman. And I just knew she was going to pass me. And she <laughs> no, because Girl. she wanted to push me to actually go harder than the average. Yes. I, I love that. I, I just, I love that about your story, man. It's, it's amazing. Like, and I Thank think it's, it's so important for so many of our audience readers because, or so many of our audience listeners, because we're a podcast, mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> but like we specifically, we talk to Gen Z and we talk to them about wealth building and not just financial wealth because money comes, you know, yeah. we, we love or you get lucky, but wealth of the mind, wealth of the relationships. And I think your story embodies so much of that, yeah. you know, thank you. So how did you transition? Well, no, you're still doing all things college, but how did you get to Gigi's Floral Boutique? Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> so during the pandemic, I was like, it was just so much going on. Everybody was experiencing so many different emotions and it just was a lot. So for me to like disconnect, turn off, I just turned to flowers. And it wasn't really like, oh, I'm doing this with the intent to start a business. Like, I feel like that's a pattern. Like everything I've done has never been the, in the intent to start a business. It just kind of right. like progressively turned into one because I was receiving like confirmation that people wanted it. So yeah, I'm like the event planner in my family and we always have flowers. But during the pandemic, I just like specifically focused on how to make flowers look pretty. And so now- like people saw it and they reached out to me. They were like, oh, can you come do my baby shower? Can you come do my bridal shower? Can you do my kid's birthday party? I even got like calls about a wedding, which I wish I could have gone, but they were doing the summer. And like I have, I had an internship this past summer, so I couldn't go. But yeah, it just, it really came because that's like literally my passion project. And when I get older, I want to open my own like floral boutique, like mm -hmm. a real standing store. But it just started because, that's what I love to do when people were like oh can you do it for me and I was like yeah so have you always been in the flowers not really I don't think I really paid attention to it until the pandemic like around 2020 and then as we were like climbing out of it we're still in one but as people started to do events again that's when I would get calls okay so mm -hmm. hearing the pattern that you start something out of a passion and then turning it into a business what were the steps and what can you give to our audience as actionable steps to determine when you're ready to turn a passion to a business? I think that's a really great question. And I would, I'm going to use all things college for the example, because that was something that I just knew, like I did it without thinking. I did it in my sleep, like eat, breathe, help people go to college or understand how to do this process because I started so young and it wasn't like, I'm doing this for validation or 
people to clap for me. I just genuinely was curious to learn for myself because no one in my family, one one person in my family has gone, but I'll be the first to go and finish. Mm. And I just know that like, it was other people around me who needed the help. So to create that community, I wanted us to do it together. So because I was doing it for so long, I got to a point where, okay, I think I can like really make something off of this. And my first consultation started at $15. It was started at $15. Now it's $150. Like, come on. Let's go. <laughs> Give me the coins because I know that I have something valuable. I have a testimony. I have I have ebooks that help students understand how to go from a 14 to a 29. I can't guarantee that, but I can tell you what I did that helped me get that result. So it's like, I know that what I'm saying, it's not, it's not fluff. Like this is, this is real life. So I know I can help people because I've transitioned people from knowing absolutely nothing to receiving a full ride at Spelman. So once I started getting those testimonies and understanding like this is concrete, I knew I could turn it into a business and reach more people. Mm, That's good. And then I know faith is a very big part for you Mm -hmm. so what was that well one how did you get so um and and I can't think of the word how did you get so involved in your faith and Mm -hmm. so solid in your faith at such a young age yes this is a great question Mm -hmm. and I love talking about this because more people need to know but I just want to say like I've always had a relationship with God but it just it's certain situations or things in my life that's like I know I'm only here today because God saved me from that. He saved me from myself. He saved me from this situation. He saved me from this friend who didn't like me. He saved me from so many different things where it's like, I couldn't do that by myself. I couldn't do that off the strength. And even going into studying for almost two years to get my scores up, I could not have done that by myself. I I could do it with the support of my family, but ultimately I had to believe that God would help me get me through and provide the strength for me to get through. So that's how I have been able to strengthen my faith because I've seen God work in my life and in my family's life and my mom's life. Like we moved to Atlanta because of Hurricane Katrina. So there's been several occasions where we were not supposed to be here, but we are standing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that that's part of the reason. But if I had to encourage anybody to increase their faith, I would say like, just pick up pick up like I don't know one of my favorite books is what happens when a woman says yes to God and I think that's a really great book for women who are interested in growing their faith so yeah I'll just leave that piece <laughs> I'm gonna write that down what happens when a woman it says yes, yes to God which mm-hmm. do you have a favorite scripture oh my favorite scripture probably let me see because I don't want to misread it it's Colossians 323. Mm-hmm. And it states, and whatever you do, do it heartily as the Lord and not to men. So essentially it's saying, whatever you do, do it with all of your heart for the glory of God. Like whether you're an employee, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a student, whether you're a student, like literally just do it all with the glory of God because you wouldn't be there without him putting you in position to be there. That's how I take it. And so I think that's really relevant right now because I'm about to graduate. Like I know where I'm working after I graduate. So just having the opportunity to be in these positions, like I have to do it because I wouldn't be here if God didn't order my steps. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So mm-hmm. I want to circle back to your floral boutique. Mm-hmm. The Dibble and Tapple and Flowers. I'm definitely not like I've seen your creations and they're like immaculate. Definitely Thank immaculate. you yeah how would you like what would you give as like um a suggester of getting into how to like really like arrange it because it's like a process yeah it's definitely a process all right I have a few tips so say you want your flower arrangement for Monday buy the flowers on like Friday so that way they can bloom by Monday because people buy flowers like the day before the day up and they're still closed I'm talking about a rose Mm -hmm. um or even like yeah, even other flowers outside of hydrangeas, like tulips, roses, um, peonies, they're all closed and they take a couple of days to open. So buy it two, three days before, um, cut the stems every day or maybe every two days. 
Yeah, like every two days, change your water almost like every two days. Cut this, cut the leaves because the leaves make the make the flower wither quicker. Really? Um, mm-hmm. The leaves make make the roses on the petals wither. Um, for me personally, I like I love a, a really pretty aesthetic, so I just put the petals in the water, and I think it brings more detail. So whatever color, like if you have a white rose, the white petal just it makes it look nicer, you know, more more luxurious. So I like to do that for mine. Um, what else? Yeah, are, are those some good tips? Those are. I'm. Okay. Me, I have like two flower pots. She about to go do it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the camera, I have like some tulips, which I think they're about to die soon. But I have like this whole big bouquet up together of um mm-hmm. purple and red roses. I mean, mm-hmm. purple and white roses. So I'm definitely about to go cut the stems. Yes. <laughs> Just want to say um, thank you so, so much for sharing your story. Do want to know all the very slight flexes that you <laughs> and all the things that you, you know dropped. that was so unnecessary. Like, <laughs> he's been in the gym. He didn't want to show off his stuff. I'm obviously in shirt on. Don't mind. Don't mind. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just amazed, man. And I, like, we've had the chance to meet on a couple of occasions now. I know you and Jay, uh, you know, we're in Spelman around the same time, but like, just to hear your story and he- have it highlighted on this platform, uh, just thank you. Yes, for- thank y'all. I think it's, uh, I think our readers, listeners, I don't know what's up, <laughs> will learn a lot. Um, and so want to end it out because I know you have to go soon with, we like to do finish up with a segment called Bag Drop. And so if people made it this far without listening, which means they weren't listening at all, at all. Um, and you wanted to leave them with a <laughs> final message, what would be your bag drop? I like that segment. That's good. I would say if I could leave someone with anything, ooh, just understand that you truly can do whatever you put your mind to. And I know a lot of people say that, but I think as long as you write it down and make it plain and put real actionable steps behind each goal and a date to hold yourself accountable, you will like start to see check, 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 check without even really noticing. And so I think understanding that and having the mindset that you can and you will, will really change a lot of people's life because I think a, I think a lot of people experience imposter syndrome. And so they feel like, oh, I'm in this space. I can't do this. I'm not capable. I'm not worthy. I don't know. Nobody in my family has done it before. I'm the first. Like, don't let that scare you. If anything, let it like fuel you to understand that you can do it and you can change the heights of your of your family and change the narrative of your family. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much mm-hmm. for joining us here on Beat the Maze podcast. And please, please tell our audience where they can find you. Yes, guys. Thank y'all first for having me again. This has been such a great conversation and I'm really thankful to have this opportunity. Um, if anyone wants to follow me, you can follow my personal page at my life is Gia. You can follow my business at all things college GT or www.allthingscollegegt.com. And then my floral business, Gigi's Floral Boutique. G-I-G-I-S, Floral Boutique. Okay, thank you so much. And Ian, where can they find you? Y'all can find me on all social platforms at Ian A. Barrett. That's two R's and two T's with an underscore at the end. Chase, where can the people find you? You guys can find me on all social media platforms at Jaysha Robinson, J-A-S-I-A Robinson. And also be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and rate this podcast on all of our platforms at Beat the Maze Podcast. We look forward to seeing you guys for another episode every Monday at 8 Mm a.m. And we'll catch you there next week. All right, Gia. You have a great one. Bye, y'all. Bye.